everybody, my name is Chase Pipeson. You're watching Chase in History, brought to you by the American Digger Magazine, and you are watching the educational arm of the Smoky Mountain Relic Room. And we're, we are so far not near anything. Anytime you see this guy right here, that means we are not near any sense of civilization. We're out with Tyree Lamp with Utah Dump Digger on Facebook. If you guys haven't had a chance, go on to Utah Dump Digger on Facebook, follow Ty. This is, he, when it comes to fossils, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's dead in, in a rock, he's on it. <laughs> we wanted to bring you guys back out here because, you know, there's, there's some important things that we're, we're trying to do with this channel that we're trying to educate you guys about it. And that is the importance of saving fossils, just like we've got here. Yeah, I mean, it's, what, what, what we've got is a turtle that's blown up. I don't know how well it shows up on the screen. I'm sure he'll cut in some better fo fo photos and pictures. But a third of this turtle's already weathered off the hill. You can see the nice round turtle shell going in, and it's all the way down the wash. Within the last year, this turtle has been exposed, exploded, and gone. Two more years, there'll be nothing left of it. I'm still gonna say, try to save this turtle. I'm gonna try to save what's left of it. Half a turtle will still be a nice specimen for somebody. Somebody will appreciate that. Hopefully it'll spark somebody interest in collecting and, and their love of the sciences. Normally on public land, this would just be gone. This would just be left to rot forever. Nobody would ever collect this specimen. What we're trying to do guys is we're trying to show you guys, show you the audience that fossils really aren't rare. Yeah. They're out there. What is rare is, is people out there collecting fossils. And that's what we're trying to do is inspire more people to get out, get off of that couch, put YouTube up and come out and hunt this stuff. Because the most dangerous thing that threatens a fossil right now is not people out collecting it. It is this right here, the natural environment. This natural environment wants to destroy this fossil. I mean, look behind us. Yeah. <laughs> We're in Badlands. This is yep. nature trying to make mountains, hills flat and just level everything out, you know? So these fossils that are trapped in this rock, they've got that, you know, they're in mother nature's way. And all she wants to do is, is just take it off and turn it into dirt. Yep. So, you know, this is an important thing, you know, to come out and to collect. Now, how, um, well, what species do we have here? This one, I don't know. This is an actual turtle. A lot of what you see out here in the Badlands are land tortoises, mm -hmm. but this is an actual turtle. I don't know which species it is. There's not enough there to tell at this point. Maybe when we get the other side exposed, we'll be able to tell, but right now it's too far gone yeah. to even tell. We're out hunting the White River Formation, and this is, you know, right at the end of the Eocene, the beginning of the Oligocene era. This is about 20, 30 million years old, somewhere around in here. This is where you've got mammals you know, exploding onto the scene and yeah. doing some really, really weird mammal stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've got bear, pig, dogs, cat, wolf, bears. <laughs> you've, you've got things dawns. with tusks and horns that don't belong to anything. That are all all <laughs> evolutionary dead ends. It was all there was wide open because the dinosaurs had disappeared and everything was wide open and they were just trying to fill all these niches and who could get there first and use the resources and and some of the things that worked for a little while and somebody else had come along and evolved better and boom they'd be gone yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do now guys is we're going to take you guys and just show you some more evidence because this is the best way best thing that we can do this is why we come out into the middle of nowhere is to show you guys the truth, the reality. It's one thing to read a link on Facebook or to read you know, something online. It's another thing to actually come out into the field and see it, and this is what we're doing. We are bringing you out in the field to see this, to show you that these fossils are more in danger of being destroyed by the natural elements than it is from people out there collecting. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna go off and we're gonna show you guys some of the, some of the things that we've seen on this trip and we've seen a lot and then we'll come back and close it up all right ready yep let's roll all right. <laughs> so one of the things you notice is the same things that happened back millions of years ago hundreds of thousands of years ago are still happening today and a lot of times when we're out walking around we find just pieces of fossils ends of limbs things like that and people are always asking 
they, they automatically assume that we're finding complete skeletons and a lot of times you don't because when you're walking around just like today you find the ends of limbs the harder pieces that are surviving longer the predators are eating it the marrow's rotting out so if this got buried down here in this creek bottom now several million years from now when it washed back out that's all you'd find and the next piece might be hundreds of yards away it just depends on how fast it was buried and deposited and how much it was predated and how far it was broke down before it got buried now do you see that in the dinosaur era or just in the mammal every every era every every era, era. happened all the time anytime something dies it, you know when you're out walking around you know, it, how often you see a complete deer skeleton laid out perfectly on the ground not very often you'll find a leg you'll find a bone you'll find stuff scattered all the way down one ravine so and it's the same thing with the dinosaurs the same thing with the mammals same thing every era that makes a lot of sense yeah. and you can see the gnaw marks on it yeah, you can see chew marks yeah. you can see how it's broken up the marrow is rotting out it's getting hollow it's just don't survive nope Okay, so one of the things that you run into out here a lot is these bones are eroding fast, they're getting damaged quick, they don't last a long time. And one of the hazards, we walked up to this edge and you can see these bones are just loose. And that's a brand new break on that bone. And there's a really nice vertebra right here. The end's broke, you can see the white on it where it's just barely been scratched, it rained three days ago. And it's already been stepped on by a cow and crushed in three days since it was exposed. They don't last very long out here in one piece. And so we try to collect them as fast as we can, but there's no way we can keep up with everything out here. All right, so Ty, what do we got going on here? Because this this is a bunch of fossil pieces, but they're everywhere. They are. This is a blown up skull. Um, within the last year, the skull eroded out enough that it just blew up and fell down this hill. We've made it 60 feet from the four-wheelers. Yeah, not far from I the four-wheelers. we found vertebra, we found a jaw now we found a skull there's six or seven more things we found already around here but this is a good example of why this stuff needs to be collected it doesn't last long i mean at this point right now one more rainstorm is down the gully it's gone it's not even identifiable one of the problems with this stuff is is this is an orodont this is a very common species there's not anything that needs to be known about this right now they've got a million of them there's a million of them that they pick up that are whole this one's blown up, so who's going to do anything with this? If this was out on public lands, nobody would ever touch this. They'd just let it erode and wash away. Where we, it, it takes so much work to put these back together that a scientist isn't going to do that when they can go get a complete one. They don't right. have the time. They don't have the resources or the, or the money or anything to do that. And what are they going to do with it anyway? Where we're commercial, it's worth it a little bit more to us to try to put some of these back together, save them, or at least take the pieces and sell them. Um, one of the things about this site too that's kind of fun is it's got all these brachiopods, all these snail shells. Oh yeah, these things over, are awesome. They're all over in this layer with these fossils. Yeah. And this shows that it was a marine environment that this was laid down in. Stream bed. Yeah. Uh, shallow shoreline something like that but you know it's just so amazing because i mean you know this piece obviously started higher up it did and it just as as the freeze thaw hits it i mean you got a oh, jaw yeah. section here brain case there yeah. you know top of the skull here more pieces going on down i mean they just this is what happens yeah. to fossils all right not every species is just Boom, there it is. There's yeah. your whole specimen yeah, right here. That's pretty unusual. You know, that never <laughs> happens, you know. And when you see a deer in the woods and you see a bone here and a leg bone over there and something yeah. way over there, that's how this stuff works. And this can do so much good inspiring somebody, you know, because, I mean, you can touch it. This is a species of mammal that is extinct. Us, not like us, like us, us, but you know, yeah. us like oh, yeah. us, yeah. you know? <laughs> so, you know, but well, we've got some more stuff we want to show you guys. So we're going to go around and we're going to show you how this flow, how these bones just get yeah. scattered because the biggest enemy to this stuff isn't people picking it up. The biggest thing is, is erosion and the natural elements are doing more to destroy these fossils. And there's more of these fossils out there to collect than anybody can collect yeah. in a lifetime. So let's go, you wanna go check out that other yeah, thing? Yeah, we'll show you the other one. Right. One of these neat things about this whole environment we're in is it preserved a lot of things that you don't normally see. We've got the mammals, 
we've got brachiopods, we've got the shells and the little animals that are living in the water. But one of these interesting things that you see are these nice little round balls, and these are dung beetle balls. So the dung beetles were making their little balls to lay their eggs in, and they got buried up with the same flood that buried up this animal. And there you have it. But if you start looking, there are little things all over the place. There's another dung beetle ball. There's brachiopod, brachiopod. I mean, they're just all over the place when you start looking really close. And on public lands, you're okay to pick up the brachiopods. Public lands, you can't pick up the vertebrate stuff. And I've always been confused by that because they're right here, same layer, washing out, eroding, blowing up the same way, but walk past that, pick up these. We made it about 50 yards, 50, 60 feet from the four wheelers. Found several things. We just filmed a skull that was blown up around the corner, popped over the hill. And here's another one. This is a jaw and more limbs that are blown up, weathering out, coming down this hill. There's pieces and parts all over. There's more back here where it's harder to see. But if you look, you can see all these pieces coming scattered all the way down the hill. And once they hit the bottom of these cracks, the way this clay is, they'll just be buried. They're gone forever. Once they hit the bottom of the mud flat, they're gone. They're done. So you've got only five or six feet from where they weathered out to where they're completely lost forever. Now, one thing we noticed while we were sitting here is we could look over at the next hill. Let me run over there. I'll point it out just to show how many and how close this stuff is together sometimes. It's another skull just right here, or half a skull. It's all weathered out. The nose is gone. The back half of the skull is gone already and it's getting ready to roll off the hill. This won't last the next rainstorm. Here's the next one. These are just big bone that's blown up and coming out. But all along this layer, every 20, 30 feet, there's another one of these for miles. That's just insane, man. That's just about half a skull. Most of it's gone already. That's crazy, but look at the teeth. Yeah. That's it, one more rainstorm. Oh yeah, that's already, I mean, it's all blown up. And that would be gone. It's gone. So when this was buried, it was probably a complete skull. You can see how bad it's fallen apart already. Back's gone, nose is gone. Still has lower jaws, they're not too bad a shape. Another word on it. But that's just the whole front end of the skull. There's the part of the eye socket there. Yeah, well, eye socket would have been here and here. It's just gone. You know, there's one a, more rainstorm. This thing would have been just yeah. off the, the mountain. This probably showed up this past rainstorm that we had yep. too. I'd say. Yep. But just right where we're filming, fossil after fossil after fossil after yep. fossil, and it's the skulls. <laughs> That's what's crazy. Jaw sections, jaw sections, skull, skull, limb. I think it was the not so chewy bits. That's we find a lot of limb ends that are broke off that the centers are missing out of and stuff, and they were harder, tougher pieces. Like the jaws are tougher, harder, not as much meat on them, mm -hmm. so they weren't predated. They weren't ate as much. That makes a lot of sense. So this is a limb end we were taking a picture of across there that I ran over here to show you. Now if you look, you can see these pieces scattered all down this little ravine right here. Now these pieces are all just loose, weathered out, blown up, falling down the mountain. There's nothing left of this limb. That's probably where it came from up here. And it's, there's a couple more, and it's eroding out there and as it erodes out it's blowing up and falling down as soon as it hits the clay at the bottom it's gone these pieces have not got any real value to them they're not articulated ends there's nothing there's nothing scientific about these they're just blowing up and washing away you know, and that's a shame too because I mean you know we had that leather rainstorm the other day I mean this would have been you know, probably complete before that rainstorm hit. And I mean, guys, that's the reality of this. I mean, you know, we're, you know, I mean, and excuse the the, the camera shots because I mean, we don't have a cameraman. <laughs> it's just me and Ty, and we're out here, you know, trying to make it around on 
yeah. Badlands. Yeah. <laughs> trying is, to show you guys the this, reality of this. Trying stuff. to find stuff that's easy enough we can walk around and he can hold a camera and not die. <laughs> <laughs> not die. Thing. Show the brachiopod because that was a neat thing too. Yeah. So the brachiopods. So on public land, you could pick these up. Public land can't touch these. And there's absolutely no reason for that. No, same I layer, mean, same area, same sort of stuff. These are invertebrate fossils. Invertebrate fossils are legal to collect on public lands. All this destroyed stuff is, oh, I'm sorry, those are invertebrate, invertebrate fossils. Invertebrates, yes. Invertebrates you are not allowed to collect on, or you are allowed to collect on public land. These are vertebrate fossils. These you are not allowed to collect on public land. Now, just for the record, we are on a ranch, a gigantic freaking ranch. <laughs> we're on a huge ranch on private property and have permission with the landowner. You know, we're we're all good. But if you see this stuff on public lands, you can't touch it, yeah. even though it's exploded, even though it's destroyed. And it has no scientific value. Has no scientific value. You know, yeah. and we're one of the things we're trying to do is to show you guys this reality. You know that these fossils are common. And and we need more people collecting them. Yep, we yeah. do. Now, one of the things like this is we're commercial. We're trying to make a little bit of money out here, at least pay for our time out here. One of the things, this isn't worth much. What I do with these is these actually go back to Utah. These go in school kits for the fourth grade students to learn about fossils and their geology kits. These are a donated piece. So that per the people that are putting those kits together for schools can't even collect these off of public lands. Yeah, and see, that's a shame. And you know, guys, there's a great way to fix this. Write your congressman. Yep. If you want to see that changed, write your congressman and talk to your congressman about it because, you know, that's who's going to make these decisions. You know, you have, you <laughs> have the ability to make change. You've just got to contact your congressman and let him know, hey, I think we should be allowed to collect this stuff. It's that simple. So, all right, you ready to go? Yeah, we'll go another Let's, 20 feet and find another one. These, <laughs> there's so many, there's so many, it's like this and like this and like this and like <laughs> this and it's crazy all right guys so here's what we're doing we're climbing up this whole draw that you see behind me and all in through here this top cap layer that you see behind we've got fossils spilling out all over the place let's head on up and see what more we can find see what's cool about this is this is a period of history where you know mammals are just now starting to try to figure everything out you know the dinosaurs are dead and gone you know there's uh, and mammals which you know during the period of dinosaurs were these little teeny tiny little little things and they started exploded onto the onto the scene and uh, since all the major predators were gone these little shrew like things just turned into giant giant animals and what's neat is is you know evolutionary they just went on so many different branches i mean they were doing all kinds of crazy things like pig bear dog cat wolf coyote moose bear pig <laughs> there's there's a lot of weird mammals in this period it is hilarious so let's see if we can't get up here and I'll show you guys some fossils. All right, well, we got up here. We've got a great little bone sticking out over here. Let's see if I can't get the camera over to show you guys. Look at that guy right there. Is that not awesome? You know, now so many of these bones, you know, are just destroyed by the natural elements. I mean, here's a great example of a bone that is weathering out and being destroyed. And there's more of them. Come on, I want to show you guys some more of them. And this is probably the most precarious fossil I've ever seen. And we're going to see if I can grab it without dropping down the 30-foot hole. One fossil. This looks to be like a large oreodont. Now we're digging the oh 
White River Formation, which is, ah, whoa, look at that skull crest. That is awesome. Think of the White River Formation. This is into the Eocene, beginning of the Oligocene. Let's see if we can get the most important part here. Ah, look at that. All right, guys, we're out here hunting the White River Formation, and we have found an awesome freaking skull. We've got a whole skull coming out right there. There's the there's the jaw of it right there. And then here, there's the canine there and the jaw section here. And we've got bones coming up here. But this is the whole thing. It looks to be a crackadon, which is like a wolf bear thing so you know that's the thing about digging the white river is is there's you've got all these crazy species of mammals that are just it's the birth of mammals and it's when mammals are trying to figure out exactly what's going on this is the skull there's the back of it right there it eroded out of this clump right there and this is the back of a skull <clears throat> this species looks to be like an oreodont which is a pig wolf bear kind of thing there were really really crazy crazy mammals uh that were going on during this period you know it's the you know mammals finally explode onto the scene and they're trying to figure out mammals are trying to figure out their own evolution so you get a lot of just crazy crazy weird critters but let's do this let's turn this one around and let's pick it up ah this is so cool Look at that! And there's the back of the skull there. Is that not epic? That is awesome. Good teeth on him too. But this is why it's important to get out and to save these fossils because of this right here. We had a rainstorm not too long ago. And look at this skull in pieces there. You've got a big piece right there. You've got jaw pieces here. You've got pieces there. So this was a pretty whole fossil until this last rain that, that came here. So, But we're going to do our best to pull it out and save what we can. But this is why you get out and save this history. is because the most dangerous thing is natural erosion. And here's another right here. And there's another bone right there. And see this cap layer? It goes all the way up there to that very top cap right there. Way above Ty's head. The they're, all they're all over. There's nobody that's going to come out and dig this stuff out of this solid rock. It's just not going to happen. So these are fossils that are abundant that are going to waste. If it was something that was super rare one of a kind maybe but they're not even going to look at this because it's the same stuff as everywhere else in the clays yeah they're not going to touch this yeah the only people dumb enough to look at this stuff are <laughs> <laughs> and me <laughs> all right so we made it back to camp and we just want to show you guys. so this is what we've this <laughs> this is what me and tony picked up yesterday this is just the loose pieces that's how many fossils We've got here. I mean, there and is We're only literally... picking up identifiable pieces. We're not picking up random chunks. These are nice limb ends, jaws. Great pieces of tooth, limb ends. I mean, this is just, this is insane. I mean, it is a five gallon bucket full of stuff. In one day. In one day. I mean, it just goes and goes. And they're all good you pieces. Know, there's, yeah, limb ends. Lots of bracts, lots of pieces, parts. I mean, that's articulated. There's three toes stuck together right there. Oh, you know, it's just a neat little piece that you can see. There's a really cool articulated yes. piece right there. I don't know how many pieces of heads and jaws and teeth, limb ends. But see, when know, we it's... tell you guys that fossils aren't rare, we mean <laughs> they're not rare when you're in the right places like this is they're everywhere there's just not a lot of people out there hunting this stuff and 
give it, you know, all of this stuff is stuff that washed away, that washed out, that was yeah. on the way to be destroyed. I can't tell yes. you how many jaw sections like this that, you know, one piece was up here, one piece was here, one piece was down yeah. here, and it was all on its way to be, to be being destroyed. As you can see, guys, there's just a lot of stuff that's out there. I mean, just on this trip, I mean, head after head after tooth after jaw after just... Yeah, it's all over. <laughs> it's all over the place. And we're in, you know, the world needs more scientists. The world needs more people out they studying do. this. You know, but there's a controversy going on, you know, and always has been a big controversy going on, you know, between the academic world and the collector world. Yeah. Ty, what? So what it is is, okay, the academics feel that all fossils, vertebrate fossils, are important enough and special enough that they should be very controlled, very regulated, and only they and repositories can have them. So out on public lands, vertebrate fossils, a trained paleontologists with the permits, and then taking it to a repository are the only people that can collect these. The problem is, is there's millions of these, very few paleontologists that don't have any money and no funding, and the repositories are full, and there's not enough museums, and there's nowhere to put them. So they don't collect everything. They don't collect one millionth of what's collect, what is out there. When they go out and they collect, they walk by all this stuff that we're showing because they're looking for something new to advance science. They're learn, looking for something that they can learn from, something they can study, something they can write papers about. And the stuff that's the same old stuff, they don't have the time for it. I mean, what are they going to do? Are they going to put 10,000 turtles in a museum? I yeah. mean, the, the Great Turtle Museum of the Plains? And, and then in 10 years, they're going to have to build another one because there's that many. Yeah. So the problem is that by them trying to save the important stuff, they've saved the stuff that's not important too. And what we've always thought is there should be some sort of a permitting process on public lands where this stuff could be saved, this stuff could be collected, because there's a lot of people that are inspired by it. There's a lot of, every classroom should have fossils in it. Every teacher should have access to it. Um, the, most museums are private and can't have this stuff unless they buy it from private lands. There's a lot that can be done with it rather than just letting it wash away. Um, there's been people arguing both sides for a long time and the only way it's gonna get fixed is by everybody being on the same page, coming up with a solution, writing their congressman, trying to get this taken care of as they're being destroyed. Because see, here's what we're, this is all that we can do, guys, is we can bring you out here to the field to show you the reality. You know, this is one, we showed you some others. Go back on our other episodes. Yeah. Look, at, look at our past episodes yeah. on Chasing History, because we've got more episodes showing dinosaur material blowing up. I mean. Fossils aren't rare. A million years is a long time. And when you've got 300 million years, yeah. that's a really long time. And there are a lot of fossils out there. And the cool thing is, is there's enough fossils out there for everybody to yeah. collect, for everybody to enjoy. So if this is something that you would like to do, you know, the United States has some incredible public lands. Write to your congressman, you know, tr say, hey, I would like to, you know, be able to collect vertebrate fossils on public lands. You know, what can you do about it? That's how these things are going to get changed. But here's the biggest thing, folks, is that right now it is illegal to collect vertebrate fossils on public yes. lands. Do not no. do it. <laughs> do not. Do not. Yeah. You don't do it. You find some private property, work with the landowner, so on and so forth. Like Ty, yeah. Ty has done on this ranch. And we went, met the rancher last night and he's a real nice guy. And yep. this is how, you know, Ty, you know, is a commercial digger. He collects this stuff. He takes it to sell it. And uh, some of it comes, gets, some of the stuff we dig is going to end up into the relic room. And some of it's going to end up on Ty's stuff where yeah, he's I mean, selling that. And the, the rancher is going to get a cut of that money. And yes. that's how this rancher subsidizes his money. You want to talk about yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, this year he had a real bad calving season. There was a, a disease came through and he lost half his calves. The money he's going to get from us from these fossils is going to make a huge difference. It's going to make the difference between him being able to pay his bank loans this year and him not being able to pay his bank loans. Without us collecting these... There's a possibility in four or five years he could lose his ranch because there's not enough money coming in. Yeah. 
and they're not being collected. They would still be go they would still be here, they would still be washing away, there'd still be eroding, blowing up, just nobody be collecting them. So everybody benefits by this. And if we find something important, if we find something new, it's gonna go to academia. Yeah. People, I mean, that ends up in museums. It ends up where people can study it. The only reason that anything is ever not studied is because those people put those regulations on themselves. And, you know, to me, that's a little bit foolish to leave, to, to cut those items out and not be able to study them just because you say it's in private hands, you can't. See, the biggest thing is, is, is what Ty alluded to. If he finds something that is rare to science, he gets it to science. We and that's, want it to go. <laughs> yeah, that's the same with a lot of these, you know, commercial guys. They want it to go to science because yep. they're as passionate about this stuff as, as the scientists are, you know. There's just a lot of it out there that needs to be collected and we need more fossil hunters out here doing this stuff and maybe you guys out there you know will become a fossil hunter or even better become a paleontologist or an archaeologist and find a new species that adds to the scientific record but you're not going to do that unless you get out here and collect this stuff and this stuff can't do its job eroding and turning back into mm. dirt. It does its job by getting collected and into somebody's hands that are gonna be inspired by it because that's what these fossils do. They inspire us yeah. to wonder about the, this amazing freaking planet that we live on. I mean, there, there's wolf, bear, pig things. <laughs> How cool is that? Dude, this period is nuts. I mean, there there's hyenas with tusks and jaws and they're all weird looking. But and they're, they're pigs. Like, but they're pigs. <laughs> it's like, what the frick is going on? Mammals are trying to figure themselves out. Yep. The dinosaurs are dead. Mammals have run of this planet. Yep. It is awesome. So look, look into it. We're doing a whole other episode just on, uh, just on this formation, the White River formation. You know, we'll, we'll get into the bear pig dog man <laughs> thing, whatever, you know, <laughs> we'll let you guys know about it. But Ty, is there anything else you'd like to add before we close up? No, I mean, go out and enjoy your public lands. If you do find something, call BLM, call the Forest Service, wherever you're at, let them know. Don't be surprised if it doesn't get picked up, but I mean, there's always a chance that you will find something new. It never hurts to go out and explore your public lands and look for this stuff, you just can't collect it. So, I really hope that you guys enjoyed, you know, us taking you out. I, th this has been like a bucket list item <laughs> for me to come out and dig this stuff from the early mammals because I mean, this is, this is just a part of, you know, everybody knows the dinosaurs and everybody knows the, the Pleistocene Ice Age stuff, but there's this huge chunk right there in the middle, you know, 20, 30, 40 million years that nobody really knows about, that nobody really talks about. And there are some fantastic fossils. But the thing is, is that we need people out there collecting it, you know. There's more of these fossils out there being destroyed than anybody could collect in their lifetime. I mean, they're all over the place and they're all mostly species that we know about you know mm -hmm. ty works really hard that if he comes across a species that is new to science oh, yeah. he gets it there <laughs> you know but there's a lot of this stuff you know all you know this this one day's worth of hunting you know in school kits or in the hands of somebody that's never held a fossil before can do more good to inspire the next generation like you guys out there to learn about science because in a time when the uh, people believe that the earth is flat and the earth is only 6,000 years old, <laughs> we need scientists yeah, we do. desperately, <laughs> badly. You know, this is one of the reasons why we get people that think the earth is only 6,000 years old because you know, we, we got to have scientists. and. and you're not going to get inspired to go into science by, you know, watching a movie or reading a book. You know, you're going to get inspired to go into science by out going out here and collecting this stuff or having this stuff available to you. And that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. this is a lot of stuff. Oh, what, what, yeah, and there's I mean, more. And yeah, there's there's, a pile. there's piles <laughs> and there's hay, there's there's it's just, we. we it's speechless. We can't just explain how much stuff there is. I mean, yeah, look, there's just, it's... I mean, this is all that's left. This was a giant head. Look at the teeth on that thing. Yeah. 
I mean, that would have been huge. I mean, that's just a giant. Look at the size of those teeth. I mean, this is an early, early mammal, you know? It's just... Show them this. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. This, is, this is just random laying on the ground like this. Look at that. That's a complete skull. Jaw section right there. Top Front and teeth jaws. right there. Cranial ridge. Eye sockets right there. And that's just walk around and pick it up like that. One more good rainstorm, that would have been a million pieces. That would have blown up. It's got some cracks in it already. It would have taken nothing to blow that up and be gone forever. Oh, for sure. And that's why it's important to get out here and collect these specimens. You know, here's the thing, guys, is that if you want to be a part of this, you know, you, you can. There's nothing stopping you. Get off of that couch. Get out of YouTube and get out here. Find a local fossil club, find a local rock club, and get out and, and, you know, and become a part of this. You know, there's places to go. Wherever you live, there's yeah. fossils there. You just gotta look into it. So Ty, you got anything else you wanna close with before we get out of here? No, I mean, just give your local rock club a call. Go outdoors, enjoy it. There's something to find no matter where you're at. You said it the best. It's just, no matter where you live, there's something fun you can do in the outdoors and you can learn and you can save this stuff. And that's the biggest thing is, is getting out there and saving this stuff. You know, this was a whole animal and just time. Yeah. <laughs> time destroyed it. Yeah. So, you know, and if we hadn't have come picked it up, these would all, this would, this, even this wouldn't be here. No. So it's important to get out there and to hunt this stuff. Ty, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. For taking us on a bucket list item. <laughs> Dude, oh, this is so, so awesome, man. We really appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching. Ty, where can people get a hold of you if they want to get a hold of you? Uh, best thing to do is look on Utah Dump Digger on Facebook. Give us a holler, take a look, make comments, make comments on these videos. I mean, share these videos. Spread the word around what we're doing. And if there's something you like, something you don't like, talk to us about it. Send us comments and make comments and just tell us what you think. Comments. comments. We do comments. <laughs> <laughs> Find Ty on Facebook, Utah Dump Digger. Join up, tell him you saw him on Chasing History, and follow him because Ty's digging. If it's in the ground and it can be dug up, this guy is. Yeah, I is mean, on in two it. days we're digging a trike. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Triceratops. He's digging dinosaurs after this. Yeah. We're going fossil fish. So. <laughs> but get out there, explore this country. So thank you guys for watching. We sure to appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe to this YouTube episode. Check out our other YouTube episodes on our channel, Chasing History. We've got a podcast, Chasing History Radio. You guys can check this out. We are Chasing History, the educational arm of the Smoky Mountain Relic Room. Be sure to check us out. And remember guys, history rocks. Woohoo! Excuse me, little mammal from the Eocene, Oligocene. Are you on Twitter? No, Chase, I'm not on Twitter, because Twitter sucks. That's right, little mammal creature bear pig thingy from the Eocene. Twitter does suck. Oh my God, there's so many. <laughs> there's so many, look. Are you crunching? <laughs> <laughs> See, just the cameraman just took a big bite of a cracker. It's God, how many? There's so many. Forgot to turn the mic on. <laughs> son of start a, over from the beginning again. Son of a bitch. <laughs> you know I don't like multiple takes. I'm sorry. Oh, you're all right. Ah, look a jaw. Look, there's another jaw. Oh my God, another jaw. Look, there's, that's not a jaw. Oh yeah, Chase, just go right up there, up the canyon of death, and then you can go right down there, down the Canyon of Death. Sure, there's, yeah, why not? Canyon of Death. If this is how Chase dies, I'll take it. Oh, but that's a job! Head, 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 head,
Ciao.